all right welcome back in this particular video we're going to consider the various um data types right so um since everything that we're going to do is going to um circulate around data right we need to really know what what are the various data types that we're going to deal with as we progress in the course okay so um these are the various types that we've um i mean we've come up with and uh, these are the various types that you're going to meet as i mean over and over again as we proceed right so we have over here we have um qualitative right we're going to take all these one by one and then dive into it to get to really get to understand so we have the qualitative type and then we have the quantitative right so we're qualitative and then we have the quantitative okay and the qualitative we have um we have the various types or right? we have nominal we have ordinal and then when we talk about the quantitative we have the interval and then we have the ratio we're going to take these one by one and then explain it for you to really get to understand it okay and then uh, we also have um, the categorical right and then um, discrete and continuous so we're going to see all these terms in action um, very soon as we progress to the next slide okay so let's see um, let's take them one by one and then try to get to understand them okay now let's let's first start with the qualitative right so before we dive into the various types remember that um if you see what we have here we have we have the qualitative and then we have the quantitative then each of these right each of these data types also have their various types right if you take qualitative for instance we have um we have nominal then we have ordinal right and then if you take say uh, quantitative we have interval and then ratio and then there's some other concept that we need to consider okay so we're going to actually take them first before we take um these these sub sub types right let's first see the difference between qualitative and then quantitative okay so that's what we're actually going to do in the next slide okay now um when you talk about the qualitative right when we talk about qualitative right remember that here we're talking about quality right and then here we talk about quantity okay we talk about quality and then we talk about um quantity quantity over here right if when we talk about the quality right th that is the qualitative think about the attribute we're going to talk about attributes very soon right so um if you don't really understand what quality i mean attribute is just just um relax for now we're going to see it in action very soon okay now qualitative data right? when we talk about qualitative data we just commonly call attributes we see qual uh, attributes later on right so, i mean later on in this course as we progress i mean very soon we're going to see that all right so these contain values right they contain values that express a quality right that's the key word over here they express what is called quality right or a state something like that so when we talk about say gender right gender can be say male right it can be say male it can be male or it can be female all right so that is gender that is gender you cannot i mean quantify this you cannot quantify this for instance when you talk about color right although we can say oh we have 20 males we have 20 males right in that case we are talking about if you quantify it then you're going to quantity okay if you quantify that we're going to quantity if you say we have uh, maybe maybe 30 30 females then we are talking about quantity and that becomes quantitative okay and uh, if we talk about color we can say oh we have maybe black right we have black we have say white right we have say pink right so there are several colors that we can talk about over here right so all these are the qualities that we can talk about right there are some kind of attributes right some some kind of um attributes or characteristics that we can talk about okay when we talk about say feelings right talk about feelings maybe someone who maybe the person is feeling say sad right the person feels sad or the person feel happy right all these are kind of a quality or characteristics that we're talking about right and um if you quantify this right if we quantify this for instance if we talk about say weight right if we talk about weight so i mean the weight of something can be say 12 kg right it can be say 12 kg in this case we have a quantity so that becomes quantitative data all right when we talk about distance maybe we can see about thousand kilometers right we can give example like a thousand kilometers from one from one um, distance to the other right so that becomes a quantity right if we talk about age maybe the person can be say 12 years old right the person can be say 50 years old right so these are quantities right so that becomes quantitative data all right also we talk about qualitative means um some characteristics or some attributes okay but when you talk about quantitative then we're talking about um the quantity right when we quantify it it becomes quantitative okay so that's that's i mean the difference between the qualitative and then the quantitative 
Okay, so before we dive into the various types of these, right, so let's, I mean, I, I hope now you have, you have a better understanding of each of these, right? So in the next slide, we're going to consider um, the various types of each of them, right? So qualitative is having its own um, types and then quantitative is having its own types. So we're going to take them one by one and then get to understand them, okay? So let's move on to the next um, slide. All right, so over here, what we're going to do is um, first consider the qualitative, right? And then uh, later on, we also consider what is called the quantitative, right? So if we pick the qualitative, right? If we pick the qualitative, we have what is called the nominal and then what is called the ordinal, right? So we have nominal data, right? We have nominal data and then we have ordinal um, data, okay? So let's get to understand each of these um, nominal and then ordinal, okay? Now, if we take nominal, if we take nominal variable or nominal data, right? Nominal variables cannot easily, I mean, cannot be easily ordered, right, into hierarchies. So, I mean, if you, if you take, for instance, if you take red, right, you cannot say red is greater than, say, white, right? You cannot say that, okay? So, we cannot order these. We cannot order these, right? That's, that's become, that becomes a nominal. Although, we have attributes, right? We have characteristics. Don't, don't forget we are talking about qualitative, right? Qualitative is just characteristics, right? So, for instance, for example, the one that we gave earlier on, like gender or maybe age, right? Um, maybe gender or maybe color, right? I think it's a better example, right? Something like that. So in that case, I mean, we're talking about attributes, right? Or characteristics, but we cannot order them, right? We cannot say, um, we cannot say maybe pink, maybe we cannot say pink is, um, is, is less than, right? It's, it's less than say um, brown, right? We cannot, we cannot do that. Okay, so that becomes nominal. That becomes nominal, although it is qualitative, but it's nominal. O unlike um, ordinal, right? If you take ordinal, some of the some of the characteristics we can actually order them. For instance, if you take um, if you take the feeling of a person, right? Feeling is is qualitative, All right? If you take say um, feeling, right? If someone is feeling somehow, I mean, the feeling of a person is qualitative, right? That becomes a qualitative data. Right, but how the person is feeling can be ordered. Right, it can be graded. Maybe the person feels okay, right, or the person feels unhappy, right. But now, can we can we now order this? Maybe um, if if we take for instance, if we take for instance, if we want to, let's let's take the example that we have over here, right. So if we have a product, right, if we, let's say if we have a product. Right, if you have a product on your on your website that you sell or on, on your shop that you sell. Now, if you want to um, take a customer review or a customer feedback, right? Now, some customers can say, oh, maybe on a skill, right? You give them a skill that, oh, um, how you feel about my, my product or what is your review or what is your feedback about, I mean, the service that I provided um, to you or, I mean, the service that you receive from me. So, I mean, the person can say, oh, I am unsatisfied, right? Or I am satisfied or very satisfied. So here, you can really see the order in this, right? The person who is unsatisfied, you can see that this person is low. I mean, um, this person is really not, not appreciating the product. But if you see the person who is um, satisfied with your product, maybe the person is having an okay, okay satisfaction, I mean, satisfaction of your product, right? Some kind of okay, okay satisfaction of your product. But a person who is very, very satisfied, right? Who is very satisfied, is really a customer of you, is really a fan of your product, right? So you can really see these customers and see where each one lies, okay? Where each one lies. So in this case, you can see that there's there's some kind of order in this, right? There's some kind of order in this one. Unlike if you say um, gender, you cannot say male, right? You cannot say male is greater than female, okay? You cannot you cannot do that. But you can see that um, satisfied is better than um, unsatisfied, or, or you can say very satisfied is better than um, satisfied, okay? In this case, you can do that. So that becomes ordinal. It has an order. Right. If you see the name ordinal, it has an order in it. But if you see nominal, right, it doesn't have order in that in it, right? You cannot order these. Okay? So that's basically um, these concepts, right? Nominal um, variable or nominal data and then ordinal variable or ordinal data. Okay? So I hope I hope you get a better sense of these um, concepts. Okay. Okay, so now let's proceed to um, the next type of um, data type that we're going to consider. That is the quantitative, right? So now, so far, we've dealt with the qualitative and we've also seen the types of um, the various types of the qualitative data. So what are we going to consider now? 
is um, quantitative, right? And the various types of quantitative. So talking about quantitative over here, right? Talking about quantitative over here, um, the, the, two, the two main types that we actually going to consider is, um, is what is called the interval, right? It's what is called the interval and then the ratio, right? So the interval and then the ratio over here, right? So, so when we talk about the interval, right? So what's, what is main, I mean, the main point here is that um, it has both, right? It has both order and then the exact difference between them, right? You can actually see the order and then the exact difference between them. So when we're talking about quantitative, we've already seen an example of quantitative where you all you can quantify, right? So if you say say um if you say hundred hundred students, right? So if you say hundred students, right? So this is a quantity or maybe the person is say twenty five years, right? The person is twenty five years. This is kind of a quantity. So this becomes quantitative data. Okay, this becomes quantitative data. So under that is why we have the interval and then the ratio. Okay, so what we are saying for, I mean, for the interval, what we're saying is that it has both the, I mean, order and then exact difference between them, right? So for instance, if we take the difference between say 60 and then 50, we can actually see that the difference between 60 and then um, 50 is actually 10, right? So if it's on the temperature that you're me measuring, right? So the, the distance, I mean, the difference between 60 degrees and then um, 50 degrees Celsius is 10 degrees, right? 10 degrees Celsius. So we can actually get to know the distance or the difference between these, right? So we can actually see the order. So we can see that, okay, 60, sorry, 60 is greater than 50. Right, 60 is greater than 50, and if we want to see the um, the difference between 60 and 50, we can actually also see the distance between 60 and then 50, which is 10. Right, so we can see we have order. Right, we have order, and then we can also see the difference between them. Okay, we have order, and then we have the difference between them. Unlike what we had earlier on, right, in the qualitative where um, some of them you can actually order them, like you cannot say male. Right, you cannot say male is greater than female. Right, you cannot actually order that. Right, you cannot order this. So, oh, I mean, you cannot oh, maybe say red, red color is greater than say pink color. Right, you cannot actually say that. All right. So in that case, it was lacking um, order in that. Right, but in this case, you can see that we have order, but and then we can also see the difference. For instance, if we cannot see the difference between red and then pink, right? What is how can you subtract this? I mean, you cannot do that right if you even if you use the color wheel it's actually going to give you some other different color but um you cannot actually see the difference like as we can see in quantitative format like this okay so we talk about interval it has interval between them 60 50 there's an interval of 10 right if we talk about order right um 60 is greater than 50 okay so it has order it has interval all right now let's talk about this ratio right let's talk about this ratio now the thing that you need to know about when you talk about ratio data right or ratio variable right is um is that it has a true zero right what do i mean by it has a true zero now if we take for instance the age of a person right if we take for instance the age of a person now what we can do is that maybe the person is one year old or maybe the person is six months right something like that or maybe one month right so maybe something like that or maybe um 17 years old something like that but you cannot say the person is a negative 14 years old right you cannot say that so what we are saying when we when we talk about this true zero is that we have a scale which starts from zero to positive infinity okay so you can think of it that way right starting from zero to positive infinity right we cannot go this way right we cannot go this way it has a true positive i mean true zero over there right it has a true zero over there okay you have a true zero over there so that's basically what you need to put in your mind don't forget that this ratio right this ratio data has all the attributes of this interval data right for instance if we take um if the person is say um, 15 years old you can see that 15 years old is older than someone who is say 10 years old right so we can actually see the i mean the order in this and if we want to see the difference between a 15 year old and a 10 year old um, person then i mean it's the distance is i mean or the difference is say five years right so the difference is five years old okay so in this case it has order it has um the difference also there and it also has a true zero right it has a true zero which this one uh, might not be having right but this one has a true zero so that's that's ratio data for you right that's ratio data for you so that's basically what you need to actually get to understand. That is the type, the two types of 
um, quantitative data, right? We have interval, then we have ratio. Okay, so we, not only this. I mean, in the next in the next um, slide, we are actually going to see two important concepts, right? Which is discrete and then continuous, right? These two important. I mean, these concepts are very important when we talk about say when we talk about say regression, right? So we're going to talk about regression later on when we're talking about your machine learning. When we get to the machine learning class, actually, you're going to see um, regression problems, right, and some classification problems. So um, when we're talking about say if you, if you get a continuous data, right, if you're predicting on a continuous data, say stock market price, right, something like that. Don't worry about this. I mean, we're going to get into the machine learning class and then really I mean, dive deep into this for you to really get to understand it, okay? But you need to really get to know that this is, I mean, the, when you talk about quantitative data, that's what is called a continuous and then discrete. So discrete, um, discrete as a type can actually take um, certain, certain values, for instance, if we take um, students who are enrolled in this particular course, right? Students who are enrolled in this particular course. Maybe we can say um, there are 1,000 students who have enrolled in this course, okay? Or maybe there are 2,000 students or maybe like 3,000 students, okay? But we cannot actually say that there are 50.5 students who have enrolled in the course. I mean, that will not make sense. No one will, will like, to, I mean, no one will want to be the half students, right? The 0.5, right? Or the half students, no one will like to be the half person. Okay. We cannot say that 3,775 or maybe um, maybe 4,000, right? Maybe 4,000.2 students are enrolled in the course. We cannot actually say that. Okay. So when we're talking about discrete, discrete data type, right? So we can actually have certain values like say 1,000, 1,000 students have enrolled in the course or 2,000 students have enrolled in the course. So in that case, we are talking about discrete data. Okay. Now, when we talk about continuous data, if we talk about, say, um, the weight of, of, of something, right, maybe you go to the market to buy, say, rice, right, so the weight of the rice can be, say, um, 20 kg, right, it can be, say, 20 kg. So in this case, we're talking about... Um, we're talking about weight. It can be a certain number. It can also be maybe... Um, it can also be maybe 20.5, right, something like that. We can actually accept that. We can actually accept that 20.5 kg, right? So if, if the measure of the product or the measure of um, the weight of what we are measuring is, is something like this, this is kind of a continuous. So think about it is that it's, it is always going to have decimal numbers, okay? It's always going to have decimal numbers, okay? So that's, that's basically continuous, right? Or maybe you're predicting um, the GDP of a country, right? The GDP of a country. So in that case, it can be a continuous, right? I mean, it's, it's mostly a continuous, a continuous data, right? So maybe just an example, it could be say 5.2, right? 5.23, something, something, right? So in that case, it's a continuous variable, okay? Or a continuous data. All right, so if you have it in absolute form, like say five, right, this is a discrete, right, this becomes a discrete. If you have it in this form, continuous, right? So this will be, let me just make it simple here. This will be, say, a whole number, right? A whole number, this will be a decimal, right? And this, this, this the continuous will be in decimals, this will be in a whole number format. Okay, so that's two things that you really need to know, right? Two data points or two data types that you really need to know when I'm talking about quantitative data type. Okay. Okay, so let's consider what is called the data attribute, okay? So now when we talk about data attributes, right? When we talk about data attributes, what we're we talking about is the characteristics, right? When we're talking about what we're talking about is um what is called the characteristics. So um let me actually show you some, right? Let me show you some over here. All right, let me actually show you some data attributes over here. So I'm going to open this data frame, All right? Don't worry about this interface, right? If you're not um, familiar with this, don't worry about this, okay? So when we, what we are talking about is, um, when we're talking about attributes, right? We're talking about these, these characteristics, right? These characters, that's, that's the column, the column um, names that you have over here, right? This becomes the attribute. So in this case, um, we want to, we have a target here, right? We have a target here. So whether the person will subscribe to a loan or the person will not subscribe to a loan. So if the person will subscribe to a loan, it's no. Um, there are some yeses. I'm just printing the first five rows. That's why you're seeing only no's here, but there are some yeses over there, right? So there are some yeses in there, right? So there are some yeses, some no's, right? Some yeses in there right so you are not seeing all the data that's why okay 
So um, these, these are some attributes, right? These are the attributes that are going to help me, that are going to help me to predict whether the person was um, paid a loan back or not. Okay, so I have the age of the person, the job, right, the job type of the person, right, so some are technicians, some are entrepreneurs, right, so that's whether the person is married or not, the age, I mean, the education of the person, whether the person, I mean, I, this one is a duplicate of it, right, so just forget about this, okay, the balance, the bank balance of the person, whether the person is having a house or not, whether the person has taken a loan before or not, okay, so there are some other attributes that are going to help me predict this, right, so these are the attributes that I'm I'm talking about right so these are the attributes that are that i'm talking about so when we're talking about attributes so everything that's why i said i've actually handpicked these concepts for you to get familiar with so so that when we get to work on them you will not i mean get confused you will become familiar with these concepts okay so this this is i mean basically what we're talking about attribute that's what we are actually referring to right so they are basically the characteristics of the data right the characteristics of the data so it can be it can be location it can be length of something or the type of something for instance or we just saw why like, we were having some age some education i mean some marriage status of the person so these are what we refer to as the data attributes all right so um i hope you have a better sense of these few concepts that we have discussed so far so in the next video we're going to actually talk about the various sources of data that um that we actually need to get to know right the various sources of data that we need to get to know all right so see you in the next video